So uh, I've already written a few tests for my view model. And generally what I do is I only unit test my view model. I don't write any tests for my view controller. So what are the do's and don'ts over there? And uh, like, for example, now in this, uh, uh, this list screen that we were talking about with the animations and everything, if we did write unit tests for the screen, then would it be affected by these animations that are happening? Uh, or do we avoid these uh, scenarios and just test behavior? Okay. Hmm. So, so yeah. first of all, view controllers and view models, they should both be tested. I mean, if you have no logic in the view controller, you don't need to test it. If you have logic in the view controller, ideally you need to test it to make sure nothing breaks and it does what you were supposed to do. Now let's have a look. There's a lot of logic in the view controller. Where's the view controller? Yeah. You don't test things like you don't want to couple your unit tests with implementation details. So I'm not going to test that the table view was registered with a specific nib. You don't need to test the, the estimated row height is 64. You don't need to test those things because those are how things look like. It's not interesting for a unit test perspective that the row height is 64, for example. It doesn't matter. It's about the behavior. So in a unit test, you will test the logic. For example, when the view model completes loading, the loading indicator should not be animated, should not be animating. Now, this is something interesting. You want in a unit test to check that when it finishes loading, we are stopping the spinner, the loading spinner. And this is easy to test. You just check a Boolean, which is, is animating. Very simple. Assert is animating false. Yeah. That's an important test. You don't want to show that spinner forever. How many apps have this bug? <laughs> right? When you need to test, you're never going to have this bug. Now, yeah. the same for the fresh control. It's not refreshing. One assertion. When I start loading, it is refreshing. It's refreshing is true. When I finish loading, it's false. Boom. Very simple unit test behavior tested. We don't check constant constants and constraints in unit tests as well. But you can test that like some view is hidden now because that's an interesting behavior. Like the UI state changed. It is hidden now. You don't need to test animations. What else? The state of the table view can be tested. Like how many cells are in the table view? Which data each cell is showing right now? Those may be interesting yeah. in unit tests. They are easy to write as well and give you more Absolutely. confidence. Yeah, exactly. So you check also the integration there with a, you know both view model and view controller. But if you have an onboarding screen, the first time you open the app, it shows a button next and a label with some text. Maybe you don't need to test that because there's no behavior in there. It's just static content, mm -hmm. right? But when you have behavior, like when I reload these, some state changes and when the view model changes, the cells need to be redrawn and something needs to be shown. If there's an error, the label should show on the screen. All of this can be tested with unit tests in isolation. Like every if statement is at least two tests. When, when it's true, when it's false. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When this is empty and when it's not empty. Every time you have an if statement, you have at least two tests to cover that behavior. So it all can be tested. So you're already testing the view model, right? So you're already covering part of that behavior, but there is still a lot of logic here. Now, if you move all this logic to the view model, it will be much simpler to test the view controller because most of yeah. those if statements will disappear from here. Yeah. You have much less tests to write in the view controller. So ideally, you move a lot of this logic to the view model. How? Let's say the view model is loading something and it got a list of players that is empty. It should notify the view controller that the new state is empty. Like you can have a, a closure like we just shown. 
mm. like some kind of notification mechanism, like a closure or a, a combined publisher. Now, the, the view controller is binding the view with that state change and will either show or hide based on that state change. So the view model will decide when the header should show or not, for example. And the view controller will just listen to that state change and update the UI. So you can have here in the view model, for example, a loading state changed. And you have, for example, a Boolean, right? You're either loading or not loading. Now the view yeah. model will just listen to this and either tell the refresh control to start refreshing or end refreshing, just to update the UI and keep it in sync with the state of the view model. Now Sorry. the view controller doesn't need to do this logic everywhere. It's just a binding. If there's a state change here, if the, you start loading or finish loading for any reason, either because of a user interaction, either because it was scheduled to start refreshing every five minutes to always keep the UI up to date, the view controller doesn't need to care about why it started changing the state, why the state changed, but it can only react. Mm -hmm. Somehow the state changed. I don't care why. I'm just going to update the UI, the view state. In a centralized place as well you don't have to you know have this logic scattered throughout the view controller yeah otherwise you have this in multiple places you need to start loading here and you start loading there you need to stop loading in another method it's hard to keep track yeah of this yeah. state and more easy to introduce bugs as well but if you keep it centralized every time the state changes this is the only place where can the states can change. It's very easy to see where it changes and how it changes. Yeah. Right. Another useful thing that you can do with a with a unit test there is uh, check the the state over time, right? So for example, your view model starts loading, what should be the state of the view, right? Now the view model stops loading, again, what should be the state of the view? Right, so it's like over time, the you can check the events and the state. It's very useful as well because it, it reads like a story, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Basically. I also recommend you watch this session here that we released recently. Oh, Testing and refactoring okay. existing. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Testing and refactoring existing iOS Swift code where we show how to unit test a view controller. Okay. Write it down and yeah. you will see exactly, exactly how to do it from the first test until the last one. 